You are watching Excess LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the October 18th, 2023 meeting of the Michigan City Parks and Recreation Board. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportecounty.org. Good evening and welcome to the Michigan City October 18th Park Board meeting. If you could please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Shannon, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Lackford? Here. Mr. Brief? Here. Mr. Borden? Here. Mr. Sperling? Here. All right, the minutes from our October 4th meeting were prepared in advance and presented. So unless, the, unless there are any changes or additions or corrections, do we have a motion to approve? I would move to accept the minutes as printed. Second. Second. <laughs> um, David, say aye. 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 So, motion carried. Any project updates? We do have a project update on the old bandstand preservation project. Um, I attended the council meeting last night where they heard on first reading an ARPA funding request for $140,000. It was approved. Um, it will go, I've asked them to hear it on second and third reading at their meeting on November 8th. If it is fully approved, that project is fully funded and we can move forward. Thank you. Questions or comments? I just thank you for your continued efforts to make sure that project uh, gets completed. Any uh, old business tonight? Uh, yes. Yeah. So as the board is aware, we bid out the water tower park renovation project. We received two bids. Um, one was in the neighborhood of 300,000 over budget. The other was upwards of 400,000. So I've been working with the architect and engineer to evaluate engineer this, which has been a common theme with all our projects recently. And we'd like to put this out for a rebid. Um, I have had interest from a third contractor that didn't attend the mandatory pre bid meeting, so they were not able to bid the last time. So whenever you can get you know more people to bid on the project, the better it is for the city. So tonight in your packet is just the notice to rebid the project, um, the schedule, the items that were changed in the rebid to reduce the scope is sadly removing the zip line. That allows us to move the swings over to the zip line location, which reduces the safety surfacing. Um, that is a huge cost of any playground project. And then removing the demolition of the existing basketball courts, which our maintenance director, Pat Bolt, said he could handle in-house. So we're hoping those three changes will bring this project um, in under or at least at budget. Thank you, Shannon. Questions or comments? So when we rebid, I think you mentioned any anyone can bid on this. It doesn't have to be the original group that bid. Yeah, so we'll target. I always try to target five to six uh, general contractors on projects. We post it on Facebook. We'll advertise it twice in the Herald Dispatch. Um, and yes, it's an open bid for anyone. And uh, is it public information of the details from the the two that bid? Uh, Larson Daniels and Reith Riley. Is that public? So let's say someone's interested. They can come in and see those original bids correct. that were not accepted. That's correct. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Questions from the public? We have a motion to approve the rebid for the water, tar water tower park renovation project. Well, I would move that we uh, allow a rebid on the water tower project renovation. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. All right. We have two items in our table business. We'll need a motion to um, untable 
both A and B, the 2024 and 2025 administrative fees, forms, and contracts, and the 2024 golf fees, forms, and contracts. Well, I would move or I would move or remove from the table the 2024, 2025 administrative fee form contract, and also the 2024 golf uh, fee forms and contracts. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. The motion is. All right, so our last meeting, we um, went over the 2024 and 2025 administrative fees, forms, and contracts in great detail, and we tabled them to give the public an opportunity to comment on uh, the proposed changes. So that's why we're back here in front of us tonight. So first, any board questions or comments? I have if I can find them. You mind if I go while you're looking? No, go ahead. Yeah. Um, okay. So I noticed on with the golf course, uh, you know, I was looking at this comparison um, with the, the fees compared to local, you know, other golf clubs, and we are definitely under, you know, uh, the weekend rate is under what all the other uh, golf courses do, you know, next to us uh, or around us. Um, I just think that this needs a little more analyzing. Um, uh, you know, we talked about resident and non-resident, and we agreed with that um, to not have a variance there. But um, I just think we need to look at this just a little bit closer. Um, and also just, I mean, one kind of small thing, that the junior rate, it looks like it's going up to $15 from 13 which was this year, and 12 in the previous years. Um, I think we need to look at that, of that not going up and giving those uh, kids a break. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I would ask, I'm sorry, I would ask if we could table this again, just so we can kind of iron out some more things with this, unless there's something pressing that we need to get this approved. Any other questions or comments on the golf fees? Uh, yeah, on the south course, the resident proposed $24 for a weekday. Then I, I go down to spring and fall before May 1st and after October 1st. It's more. Oh, it's more. I'm misreading that. It's just $29. I would nice. think probably it wouldn't be too heavy. The, the weather's not really conducive. I don't know. Maybe I'm misreading now. What page are you looking for? Uh, golf fees comparison. It's this first page. It's like the third that, page in. Yeah, third page in. I just don't know why it'd be five dollars more early and late. Mm -hmm. So Shannon, uh, well, while we're looking at that, in regard to the question of tabling this again, are there downsides? Do we need to have these fees published? And are there any negative ramifications if there's a motion and a, and it's approved to table to the November 1st meeting? Um, the season half sale starts on November 1st. So if there's no question on those, if you could approve the season pass fees, then we'd be prepared to mm -hmm. open up for sales. We're usually busy like right first day that we start selling memberships. Okay. Okay. Other than that, um, no, because nothing else here applies until next year. All right, thank you. So is there a response to Mr. Freeze's question on the $29 fee? All I can all I can say, Mr. Freeze, is I see that in the past, from 20, 000, uh, 2019 to twenty four, it's always been more on the weekend. So for some reason, that carries on the same. Well, this is weekday, spring and fall before May after October first. It's twenty nine dollars for the same thing up here on the south course. Weekday resident, it's twenty four dollars. Mm -hmm. Non-resident is twenty-four dollars, and this—I just don't understand why it go up five dollars. 
before a prime time season. Yeah, October I, I, there must be a logical reason mm -hmm. why he has that. I just don't know what it is. Yeah. Again, if you look at the history, it looks like it's always been that way. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, so maybe we just need to iron out some of these things. And I noticed that the, the outing price didn't make sense on the on the weekends. That was another thing. It was, yeah. Well, maybe then we should take this a two prong approach um, as uh, Shannon recommended, maybe approve at least the season pass amount or address the season pass amount at some price and set that so we can uh, be ready for the November 1st sales and then table the remainder so we can tackle some of these other questions. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Questions from the public? All right, so we'd have to take this and um, the motion would have to address the season pass approval and tabling the remaining uh, fees and contracts and cart packages, et cetera. Can we separate the administrative fee forms and contracts from the golf fees forms and contracts? Yes, separately. Uh, yeah, I would. Uh, I would recommend we just do these separately. We can do since we've been talking about the golf fees, forms, and contracts. Let's just do that one, get out of the way, and then we'll go to the administrative fees forms after that. Unless there's an unless there's an objection. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go with the season packages. Yeah, we would have to, because of the deadlines involved and the timing, we would have to approve that portion or set the price. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. All right, so do we have a motion to approve the season pass rules? I'm sorry, the season pass fees for the 2024 season as presented in the packet. I would move that we accept the 2024 season pass fees as uh, seen here on the second page. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carried. So what's remaining, uh, all the other items that we have not passed remain open and uh, we would need a motion to table them until our November 1st meeting. I would move that we table the rest of the Golf fees, forms, and contracts until November 1st. Second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Vote. Motion carried. All right. So, who's going to take the lead and work with, whether it's Ed or um, Mr. Neiman, to address these concerns before our next meeting? I'll be glad to sit down with any of the board, Diane and Marty. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I would I would be happy to continue okay. working on those things. So sure. Sure. That would be great. Yeah. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to the 2024-2025 administrative fees, forms, and contracts package. Uh, again, we'll ask the board if they have any other questions or comments, and then we'll ask the public. Um, I, I do. The, the thing that I brought up last week, we still haven't resolved that or two weeks ago. So I'm wondering if 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 it's OK, if we could extend this one more time. Um, specifically in regard to the wording on the um, offensive mm -hmm. items, I had some brief conversation with um, Shannon today. And I think getting that wording, and that's one of the things that we should address it before this meeting. And that's why I called down to see if there's any such wording. Mm -hmm. And um, I Shannon relayed to me, and I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth. And that's why we, we can have this conversation here. But it gets it gets difficult to try to in these contracts to write language 
that might not be considered offensive? And when does that cross some lines and not cross some lines? Mm -hmm. So I was, um, I, I think the contracts have served us well up to this point, and I don't think adding that additional language, I don't think, one, we haven't had an issue with it, and I don't think adding that additional language, and we've had two weeks to, to get it, and since there was really no clear path to put that in there, I'm I'm fine with the way they're written as it is, but that's just my opinion. Okay. okay. I'm open to anyone else's discussion, and if I wasn't being clear in terms of what it is, it's just how do you legally write something in the contract that can pass mm -hmm. some legal challenge right is what it comes down to and i did talk with laura she was very gracious with her time and you know she made the suggestion to maybe check with other parks and rec departments to see you know maybe if they have some verbiage in there and nothing that i mean maybe what i said last time was a little strong uh and i've thought about it a lot since then and i even thought of using the words good taste that things should be done in good taste that's pretty simple uh, as far as signage and you know what is being sold and again i i agree there's nothing that has that i have know of that has been sold there but just trying to think ahead a little bit on you know um this situation so um does anyone else have any thoughts on that i mean if you agree with phil that's fine i just or do you think there's a need for anything like that? I don't know. It seems like in years past, we haven't had any problems. Mm -hmm. Not that well, there might not be. Except for one. Yeah. Well, yes. One sign. Yeah. yeah. If you consider that a problem. I, yeah. I think it is. You may and others may not. Well, no. I, I think it was in very poor taste, that sign. Well, yes. And, and one thing we discussed is the subjectivity of it and the enforceability of it. Right, administering something like that is extremely difficult. It can't be everywhere. And what one person finds offensive, as we all know, another person may not. So to craft language that's really um, helpful would be difficult. That's why I told her she wants to call other places to see what they've done. Um, certainly, that, that's always a good strategy, but I agree with you it would be very difficult to craft it in a way where it's impactful or helpful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And <laughs> any other questions or comments about that or any other items in the, in the yeah, packet? I found what I was looking for. Dealing with uh, Pullman Park rental. Um, what if, and I go by there a lot, um, and many times during the week, I, I see a lot of activity, which is good. I mean, it's not, they're not ruining anything, but I know that, first of all, the parking, they park up by the shelter. Uh, I haven't noticed any ground fires or anything, and I don't think you're supposed to park, park in, in the park. I realize that the parking facilities at Pullman Park, in order to use the uh, shelter to haul things, it's a lengthy ways if you have a lot of heavy coolers and grills. So I, I could see where they might drive up and drop the stuff off, but not park. I don't have an answer to it. I'm not going to stop and reprimand them. I don't think that's part of my job description. Uh, anyhow, I was just wondering about that. Can they get permit someplace in here? It says you get permission uh, to do certain things. And uh, I wonder if that would be part of it. Say, can I drive up there? I don't know the wording. And the second thing is, I wasn't even aware that you needed a rental agreement because it just seems like there's an awful lot of activity there in the summer, which is good again, but I don't think they have permits. So if I want to go there and have a gathering and no one has it, do I need a permit to, do I need this rental agreement to go there and use that facility? You don't need a rental agreement to use any of our 
park facilities. Um, if they're not rented, they're all open to the public free of charge, first come, first serve basis. Okay, that answered my question. Thank you. I just wondered about driving up to the shelter. Um, so the agreement doesn't list anything about parking? No. But there are signs there that say but that. Overall, they're not supposed to park there. Yes, there's spotting signs. Yeah. So we, we list no glass, no fires. Right. We could, um, we, and if we wanted to call it out specifically, we could add no parking um, within, um, we have to park on the asphalt, we can say no parking on the grass. I mean, that would work fine if they sign an agreement, but uh, Shannon had answered my question, you don't need an agreement. Right. True. So they perhaps didn't read the sign or don't care or, you know, they're unaware. What does the sign say currently? No vehicles. On the, on the grounds, no parking on the ground. Yeah, it might be something we can't do anything about unless we're going to enforce it with manpower out there. Yeah, it wouldn't be easy. Right. I mean, I just, <laughs> and again, I don't stop joining on the party, but they seem like they're having a good time. They're not destructive. I just wonder, you know, we have that posted. So perhaps if it doesn't mean anything, take the notice now. Then there is no question. All right, thank you, Phil. Any other questions or comments? Any questions from the public? All right, seeing none, what's the pleasure of the board? Well, I would move that we um, Except the 2024 20, 2025 administrative fees, forms, and contract as printed in our packet. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right, now we'll move into new business. And the first is the 2024 25 zoo fees, contracts, and forms. Hello, welcome. So I sent you guys the, the packet information. Now, most of it has changed much. So we did add a few more programs trying to um, reach out to more of the community that we are missing. Uh, like I said, we want to be an, an all purpose zoo for everybody. Um, so I'm here to answer questions that you might have on these programs. Thank you, Jamie. Any questions or comments from the board? And but uh, before we begin, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, Shannon, do we, and is this another one we normally will table and ask for input and then at the next yeah, meeting approve? The board's always tabled fees. All right. Thank you. All right. Sorry, Phil. No, that's all right. I, wasn't, I was just going to comment to Jamie. Uh, uh, some out of town guests that have visited our the zoo this year had some very nice things to say about it. Good, good to hear. Uh, yeah, it was it's good, nice to hear. I'll right. pass along. And I didn't threaten them or anything. Good. <laughs> okay. uh, they, were, no, but thank they were impressed with our zoo. Cleanliness and upkeep, things like that. So, congratulations on that. Any other questions or comments? Do you think you can provide us with some numbers as far as this year? I mean, we have the annual report from 2020, uh, 2022, but just the, you know, numbers as far as. It's in our third quarter report, but we also you know, always quit in the in the year, but I can get before then. We're still open season, so we're still working yeah. on numbers. Okay. Okay. But we are up. But yeah, I can get yeah. the numbers you want. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Third quarter report will be presented via your next meeting. Yeah, I was going to say, I haven't seen that. Okay. Okay, perfect. They'll be presented at the next meeting, you said? Uh, yeah. Okay. Is it possible to get those numbers before the next meeting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. Cool. Thank you. They'll report out early. Yeah. Or if you don't object. Okay. No objection okay. here. Give you more time to review. Yeah. Jimmy, thanks for always trying to find um, different ways to add excitement to the zoo, including the new programs. Uh, it's, I, I think it's uh, it just shows that you're fully invested, invested there. And um, 
the compliments that Mr. Freeze gets and that we all get for it. It's just a reflection of you and your leadership there. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the public? All right. Uh, do we have a motion to table till our November 1st meeting the zoo fees, forms, and contracts? I would move that we table this uh, 2024 annual zoo hours, fees, events, programs, and contracts. Is that good? November 1st. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion here. All right, now we have the 2023 Trail Creek Week report. This was included in your packet. Um, this doesn't need a vote, it's just for informational purposes, but I just would like to note um, that after COVID, we were very pleased that this program was taken off again. This year, we served 812 students in the one week period. We had a successful Creek Estate May Race, which raises uh, funding for this annual program. I'm happy to report Michigan City River Rats, that's our team, mm -hmm. on the Team Spirit Award. Yay. For I think the fourth year of, out of five. <laughs> um, so it was a great event, great day, and um, a great program and working with some different partners um, to get the park more involved in the weekly program with the school kids and change it up a little bit. You know, we've been doing it since 2012. Um, so we have some opportunities for um, different educational stations. So we'll be working on that over the winter. Thank you, Shannon. You're welcome. Any questions or comments? Just a comment. Whoever came up with the name is pretty cool. Creepness Stakes. Mm -hmm. I like Being that. Being a mess of car. <laughs> <laughs> and if you Google it, you'll find Creepness Stakes. So it's, it's right. hard to find all of it. <laughs> Come up with a hashtag, get in the boat to separate it from the horse race. <laughs> Uh, great report, Shannon. Yeah, it's cool. Okay. All right, next is the special purchase request for the uh, zoo building furnace. Welcome back. <laughs> okay, uh, I felt the report, uh, but basically, on uh, was it Monday, two Mondays ago, we had a uh, what we thought was a gas leak. So we follow our procedures to evacuate the zoo. It ended up being a furnace that was burning dirty, which is the word they used. Um, luckily, we had uh, Stephanie Electric um, at on zoo grounds looking at another furnace, um, and they were able to pinpoint the issue, find out that it was um, basically a fire hazard and needed to be replaced, replaced as soon as possible. So NIPSCO gave us permission to shut down that furnace and we move forward with getting it replaced since we are in cold temperatures and those animals are heat cold sensitive. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a priority to get that done. So I'm asking permission to use the special purchase policy to pay for that uh, unit, which we will have funds for out of the endowment funds that can be used on new, but not replaced or not repairs. So it falls into that parameter. Great, mm -hmm. thank you for that detail. And Laura, this seems to be the falls perfectly within the purpose of the purchase yeah, special purchase all the time. Yeah, yeah, and the important part about keeping the records for five years is all included, so it was good to you. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Questions from the public? All right, thank you, Jamie. Uh, well, what's the pleasure of the board? <laughs> well, I'd move, uh, we accept the uh, the repair or the replacement of the furnace uh, uh, on the primate house uh, as printed on page two. Under the special purchase policy? Yes. Thank you. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right. We have the youth uh, basketball clinics proposal. Uh, yes. This was included in your packet. Um, I don't know if all of you have met Kayla Shablowski. She's our new administrative assistant in the office. She's been working with um, a school coach over in LaPorte to try to come up with some more activity for our youth. And this program can be put together fairly quickly as a drop-in clinic. Um, so you don't have to register for a league or anything. So we can start to gauge 
in terms of bringing another youth program back into our school systems. She did an outstanding job of giving you the overview of how the program would work. Unfortunately, this morning, we found out that the dates that we have requested for the gyms aren't available. So we still need to work out those details. So I would just ask the board to um, look at her proposal, get any questions back to her that you can have about the program and table it until your next meeting when we can get um, the gym dates confirmed um, because the Monday and Wednesday, I think it was not working out. So we're still working on it, but uh, kudos to you. We're putting together a nice presentation and trying to increase our programming, which everyone knows we are sorely lacking. Thank you, Shannon. <clears throat> what gyms were we looking at? Barker and Krieger. <laughs> I thought it was very well documented, uh, very detailed proposal. So the time and effort it took to put together is much appreciated. I think it's a great start to start with the drop-ins. It's a great, great idea. Something we should keep in mind is that uh, years ago, we had uh, youth basketball programs and we partnered with the YMCA. I, st I think they continue their program. So uh, just like to make sure that we work in conjunction with them. I don't think this is in competition with it initially. So we're not duplicating um, programming, but as it moves along and we talk about um, leagues, that's when I think we, we need to be lock and step with the YMCA. So we're not offering duplicate uh, programming. Yeah. Just my opinion. No, that's a good point. Are there any elementary schools that would be available? I think she's working with the school system on location. Okay. So we talked about, I mean, this was put together. This was just an idea she came up with a few weeks ago. She's worked really hard to put it together. I like the idea of drop ins. Um, and if they work over the winter, it gives kids that don't have transportation opportunities to walk to the elementary school or uh, middle schools in their neighborhoods. Um, so even if we do move into a league with the YMCA, I, I just like this model, no matter what it is, that the kid does not have to register for two months. They need something to do on a Thursday night. There's something at that level yeah. to drop in on. Yeah, it's cool. So it's a good model that we're looking at. And um, if you would table it, we'll come back to more details and hopefully the coach will be able to attend your next meeting as well. Very good. Uh, do we have a motion to table the youth basketball clinic proposal? I would move that we table the youth basketball drop-ins clinic for now. Second it. Second. Oh, I'm very aye. 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 Motion carried. All right, now we have uh, the prod pantries and the parks proposal. This was also presented um, by Kayla as kind of a pilot program. She's been working with our maintenance director, Pat Bolts. There are several of these um, in Michigan City. I know there's one at Knapp School. My grandson lives there. So it's similar to a little library. Um, you just put pantry items in there and people can bring things that they, they're not going to be able to use and take something that they need. And that can be a variety of things. She is working on getting sponsors to not only build the boxes, so she's already got the Carpenters Union on board. Actually, Kayla, do you want to come up and talk about your presentation? Stop by there. Good evening and welcome. Welcome. Hi there. So, yes, I had reached out to the Carpenters Union. Um, and they graciously agreed um, if we could supply them with the materials that they would be happy to build those boxes for us. Um, I started reaching out to some local businesses um, to see if we could get the 200, I think 73 roundabout um, price point covered. And we already have one um, business willing to donate $150. So that would cover half of the pantry. Um, I think if it was approved, we would have a lot of great feedback within the community. Um, you know, I live in LaPorte now. Um, we also have these and they're well used. Um, and I want to make a point. Um, I was scrolling through Facebook last night just before the council meeting, and there were three posts in Michigan City Moms of moms looking for food. They weren't asking for money. 
Um, they weren't asking for someone to take them shopping. They needed something to cook for their children for dinner that night. You know, they said they had some supplies, but maybe not enough, you know, to cook a whole meal. Um, so I really think these would be utilized. Um, I know we have food pantries, but they're not accessible to everyone. You know, so many people don't have transportation, just or even embarrassed to go and ask for help. This is something they could easily walk to with their kids, plant at the pantry, take a box of macaroni and cheese, and go home and feed their families. So I'm really excited about it, and I hope um, that you consider it. Thank you. Questions? Just a comment. <laughs> I was a little leery in what you had mentioned that. You talked to Mr. Volts because I noticed there was a lot of references here to the maintenance department. So that was good thinking. <laughs> oh, yeah. So basically with maintenance um, for the trial boxes, well, I would ask them to install it. So it would be built. Um, I would ask them to be the ones, though, to dig the hole, to put the concrete in and install it in the location. Um, and then for that trial period, I would just like them to, when they drive by, let us know if the structure is standing, if there are any vandalism reports, those kind of things. Um, and in the future, a minor repair, if a shingle comes off, you know, the hinge is loose, think that they could repair easily. <clears throat> any other questions or comments? Questions from the public? Thank you, Kayla. Can I approach? Please. Good evening and welcome. Please just state your name and address for the record. Good, good evening, esteemed board members. Dakota Euler, 718 Emma Street, Michigan City, and a member of the Eastport Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Over 38 million people in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Right now, one in nine of our neighbors is at risk of hunger. No, oh, here, I have two. The risk means they are food insecure. Food insecurity is defined as a lack of consistent access to enough food for an access healthy life. People from all walks of life can become food insecure, and many will find themselves in need at some point during their lifetime. In Michigan City, many neighbors are just one job loss or medical crisis away from not having enough to eat. Food insecurity may be influenced by a number of factors, including income, employment, ethnicity, and disability. The risk for food insecurity increases when money to buy food is limited or not available. In 2020, 28.6% of low-income households were food insecure, compared to the national average of 10.5%. The mini pantry movement is a grassroots solution to an immediate and local need. Whether a need for food or a need to give, mini pantries help neighbors feed neighbors, nursing neighborhoods, a mini pantry is an easy way for neighbors to help neighbors who need food, hygiene, or paper items. Even though this pantry in the park is supposed to be in a local neighborhood, these pantries in the park will belong to all of us. The Eastport Neighborhood Association is prepared to partner with Michigan City Parks and Recreation with your favorable vote this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, welcome. Hi, I'm Lisa Pierzakowski. I'm the Center Township Trustee in Laporte, and we have a lot of pantries in Laporte. So um, I brought a sample of the, the drawing, and that is actually my first one was built for me by an Eagle Scout. That was his Eagle Scout project. So we now, as you will see, the very front one is at our library, and it has the dual doors. And I love this one the best because with the dual doors, they automatically have springs and they shut. So they, you don't have any of the problems. Now the next one, um, as you can see, the white one, and then I, I took copies of, or I'm sorry, I took pictures of the, the latches also. So as you can see, when you've got the hook latch, that gets broke all the time, okay? Um, the orange one is probably our most popular one is at our Civic Auditorium. And it also, the latch, we have problems with the latch. Now, the last one was actually done by the Lions, or I'm sorry, by the Kiwanis. The Kiwanis uh, built this last one, and it is at one of our churches, and it has a different type of lock, and that is the only lock that has lasted the two and a half years it's been up. Otherwise, all the other ones, my husband and I are replacing them all the time. But there again, the very front one um, that we have at our um, library has the dual doors, and it 
it has the spring, so it just it shuts. So you don't have to worry about the latch. You don't have to worry about it being open. Somebody leaving it open because that's what always happens. Somebody leaves it open or something like that. Um, I fill them a couple times a week um, with donations from our Family Express. Our Family Express has um, donations that I pick up on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then we have several organizations that go and, and fill them up. But it's real easy to get the donation from the different businesses, you know, like Dollar General, um, Speedway. A lot of those will give like their day old stuff, you know, the bread, the donuts, the, you know, stuff like that. So it's real easy to get the food to fill them. And, you know, like she said on the mom's page, we have the same thing. I, I watch it all the time. You know, people say the pantries aren't open late enough and I need this or I need that. So they have been very well used in Laporte. So we have four of them um, that that I manage and take care of. And then we have one that's um, a school takes care of also. But pretty much everybody, you know, says what is, you know, what can you put in there? What should you not put in there and stuff like that? But it's it's very well used. So I mean, I the area that you know Dakota's talking about is definitely um, an area that I would think that they would be greatly used. So fantastic. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight and sharing your experiences. Question. Sure. I have a question, please. Oh. I belong to a service organization that uh, we raise money to give it away. Uh, the Exchange Club, I think. Uh, at two hundred and seventy three dollars and fifty six cents, I could get them to OK that uh, who would where and who would I send the check to? Well, this is for Michigan City. I'm just bringing the information that we do in Laporte. But like I said, you know, we had service clubs that did it. And then but our very first one was done by an Eagle Scout. So I don't know how many of you involved with with Scouts or anything, but that is a big project for the Eagle Scouts. So that, you know, might be something I don't know how many you have. Now in Michigan City, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure how many you have or how many you want to put up. We're actually working on getting some more put up in Laporte because it's, it's, you know, they are, they're always empty. I mean, there's just, there's definitely a use. I don't see any time people are like, well, what if the food sits there? What if it does, you know, and I'm like, it's never, I mean, I'm there every morning filling them up with something. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, any service order, like I said, Kiwanis did, um, built a couple of them for us and then um, Eagle Scouts. So definitely a service organization would be a great project for them. Thank you. Uh huh. Thank you. And through my employment with Strack and Antillo Supermarket, we uh, work very closely with Northwest Indiana Food Bank and uh, one in seven families in Northwest Indiana, food insecure, they don't know where their meal's coming from when they wake up in the morning. And so it's certainly, uh, it's, uh, it's out of, People need um, some assistance. So um, I think for Kayla to spearhead this and come up with it and again, document it very well and find funding and schematics and the proposal very well done, very well documented. Thank you. I'd just like to mention to your two private locations would be um, Gardena Park and the other is Walker Street Park. And we chose that because the community garden so kind of goes hand in hand. In a, that neighborhood is a food desert, so anything you can add to the garden activity, I think that's a great place, and it's just well attended. We don't want to stick them out in neighborhood parks that don't have a lot of attendance because they think they'll get big lives. So I think it's a good pilot. Start out. Any other questions or comments from the board? Questions from the public? Uh, excuse me, I would like to say. Uh, thank you uh, for your presentation. It was very good at enforcing what Kayla spearheaded. Uh, and I would like to say thank you, Kayla, for your presentation on the basketball as well. You've done a great job with that. And I if the board doesn't already know, that's one iota of the work you do assisting Melissa. So thank you very much. Nice work. All right. Do we have um, or what's the board's um prerogative on the pantries and the parks proposal. I would move that we uh, give Kayla and the park department permission to move forward with the project pantries in the park. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Closed. No, thank you. Good luck. Mm -hmm. 
All right, now we have resolution number 1019, whereas the superintendent of the parks, or as the superintendent of the park, I'm sorry, or as the superintendent of the Department of Parks and Recreation has reported that a certain transfer funds are necessary within the budget of the Michigan City Department of Parks and Recreation because of unanticipated expenses from various accounts which accounts do not have sufficient funds available for disbursement for said expenses and whereas there are funds available for said expenses of various other accounts which are not expected to be paid from said accounts during the remainder of the budget year and whereas the Michigan City Parks and Recreation Board has determined said expenses are necessary and that account transfer should be made in order to meet said expenses. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the following transfer be made from the following named accounts to the following named accounts for the purposes stated herein. Decrease fund, 2204503, rec fund, pesticides and chemicals, 13,000. Increase fund, 2204503, rec fund, contractual, 13,000. Unless there are questions or comments, there's a motion to approve resolution number 1019. I would move to accept resolution number 1019. Second. Second. Um, favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Any other new business that we need to attend to? I just wanted to report to the board that the contract that you signed for the Aqua F Jet Ski races on March 15th contained all the dates of their races. They are changing their July 12th through July 14th date to July 5th through July 7th. This actually worked out well for us because. We had two events in the park, soccer and singing and jazz schools. So um, and I'll note that on the original agreement, but I just want to inform the board of that change. Thank you, Shannon. You're welcome. All right, we will move on to reports of officer superintendent's report. Mr. Shen. Thank you, Mr. President. You're welcome. This evening, I would like to report that all of the sub departments are preparing for things, mostly the winter. Uh, the park maintenance department and golf maintenance department uh, and the zoo uh, are preparing uh, all of their winterizing. Uh, sand removal is also uh, an ongoing thing with the north wind. But uh, just so you realize the uh, difference in the change in their duties, along with the holiday lights uh, are beginning to be worked on and assembled and installed. Um, I get very good reports from all the sub departments uh, from the golf community. I get reports on how great the golf course looks and how the mechanic keeps up with the equipment. I get great reports like Mr. Freeze did from out of towners uh, when I visit the zoo. And I get great reports from the appearance of our parks. Um, I would like to uh, pass on to you a thank you from Carl Swihart, who is the manager of the NSA girls softball at Patriot Park. And it just says, Ed, I want to thank your park staff, especially Keith and Pat. Things went very well this year at Patriot Park, and the park looked its best yet. I can tell you that these two put everything into the appearance of the park and excellent communication with me concerning the events held this year. These two are very a very integral part of the facility and have made each of our events successful this year. So I just wanted to pass that on to the board, how well the uh, Park Department maintenance is doing out at Patriot Park under Mr. Volz's uh, supervision. Um, I would also like to mention that, uh, as I did in the last superintendent's report, that uh, Mr. Kraczynski and I are considering bringing a proposal to you at the next Park board meeting, we have to go over some numbers uh, on uh, adult basketball. Uh, adult basketball at a, a facility at the Michigan City Area Schools. Uh, hopefully it would be Barker. Uh, I have made arrangements uh, to have, and Barker is available, uh, filled out the forms, uh, sent the COI. I will come up to you and propose this at the next meeting and possibly even get some questions uh, answered by the board uh, within the next week or so to see how you feel about this. So uh, we're hoping to propose adult men's basketball in the next meeting. And this concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. I had questions with the superintendent. <clears throat> 
Ed, just um, I commented earlier about youth basketball and coordinating with the Y. I do believe the YMC also took over our adult basketball program. So if I'm if I'm not mistaken, so if if um, I don't want to have duplicate programming, if indeed they took it over. Good point, Phil. I I did call the Y, and Kathy Workman told me that she is not going to provide adult basketball okay. this year. Great. Well, thanks for jumping on that. Well, and having it. Uh, it was Shannon's idea <laughs> that you might ask that. So now having uh, thank you. Providing opportunities is, and not duplicating is just mm -hmm. what it's all about. So, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for the superintendent? All right, the liaison reports. I'm the Planning Commission liaison, and there has not been a meeting since our last meeting. Uh, Port Authority liaison, Mr. Priest. Uh, there was a meeting, but nothing to report. Thank you. And the Zoological Society. <laughs> the Zoological Society met last week, but there's nothing new to report. Thank you. Any report tonight from Ms. Nirmar? Thank you. Nothing to report. Thank you. Any director's reports? No, nope, sir. Okay. Department finances. <laughs> Mr. Glidden. I have the uh, Michigan City Park Department claims docket for October 4th, 2023. Municipal $50,776.42. Golf petty cash $3,166.75. Park EFT. $8,855.03. Total claim $60,543.95. And would move that we meet the docket for October 4th. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And the payroll number 20 for 2023, 917.23 through 930.23, pay date 10-6-2023. Total payroll eighty five thousand six hundred seventy five dollars and ninety three cents. I would move that we meet the payroll. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Proposed. Motion carried. I have gifts and donations. An anonymous miscellaneous zoo donation six dollars. Lakeshore Foods Al's for Boo at the Zoo four hundred fifty dollars. Michigan City Christian Church, Boo at the Zoo donation, $350. The Port Community Federal Credit Union, Boo at the Zoo donation, $350. And an unknown zoo donation artwork, $35. And I would uh, move that we accept these gifts and donations. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. That's it. That's it. All right. Uh, any comments from the public tonight? Any comments from the board? Okay. Seeing that our next meeting is uh, Wednesday, November 1st, 5 p.m. right here. Uh, motion to adjourn. So move.